Hallelujah. Woo, snap. Everyone say snap. <laughs> it's an awakening. But he needs to get awakened. If you don't snap, you get snapped. Hallelujah. There's a lot of things going on, you know. You know, we talk about the last days and the, and the, and the time where we're in and the season that we're in. You know, as what it's called biblically, the beginning of sorrows or birth pangs. And we're coming to the end of them. And we're seeing many, many things happen. Plagues, pestilence, things that are uncontrollable. I don't know if you've seen much about the locusts that are destroying all over the world. Miles of them destroying, millions of them are destroying harvest crops. Saudi Arabia, Africa, all over the world. It's happening. Asia, locusts. Sounds like the days of Moses, amen? Well, what did the Lord say? That as we get closer, it will become the days of like Noah, amen, and Sodom and Gomorrah. And in this, we know that there will be two witnesses that will be showing up eventually. They will be in Israel. And he'll begin to proclaim certain things and exposing certain things and proclaiming the word of God. Giving people an opportunity to turn their ways. And eventually they will be destroyed and killed. And they will lay their bodies out for three days. And then a voice will come from heaven and say, come home. You know what? That's the day we go home. That's going to be the fulfillment of the Feast of Trumpets. Oh, hallelujah. But see, many people don't know these things. They don't understand what's going on. Because the enemy's greatest weapon we know is deception. So that means he keeps them distracted. You know, from the moment you popped out of mom's womb, amen, you were told you need to be somebody. You need to get an education. You need to do this. You need to do that. In other words, you weren't anybody yet. But in the eyes of God, you were somebody already. Amen? You may have been that child, but there was that process of maturing and growing and learning. And God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So we grew, and we were imparted with all the things of the world. When you think about it, what is life? It's a place of memory. I mean, we live a life of memory. Everything is about memory. So you're, where your situation is, where you are planted in your mind in the areas of your memory, you'll either live a life of joy or miserable. And then you'll have up and down days too. So one of the things that the Lord Jesus came into the world, put on physical realm. Why? Because he is the mind of God. And he came to exchange our ways of thoughts. So that we can think like he does. You know, think about the greatest thing of a father or a parent that's upright. They would love their children to see the same things they see and think the same ways they think. Not that we, will, we, we have the same personality. We all have a different personality. But to have a like-mindedness. That's what God wants. So there is a... a, a, a an area where we've got to learn how to process our thoughts. It's processing your thoughts, which is vitally important. And so many times people are not processing their thoughts. Did you ever get around someone who just speaks whatever they think? Drives you crazy, doesn't it? I'm going to put a sock in her mouth for a minute. Quit just speaking what you think. Many people speak however they feel. Oh, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. This is how I feel. So what? See, there's got to be an exchange of of, uh, in processing of determining what thoughts are pleasing to God, displeasing, and what's going to benefit you. See, you're going to live a life of emotional thought or truth. It's one or the other. So there's a processing where you and I must constantly, we must live it in this realm. Because the moment you stop processing your thoughts is the moment you start to be taken over by the world again. That's why many people backslide. 
That's why they go back into the world. Why? Because, you, you see, your thought process is keeping you connected to fulfillment. He's your fulfillment. The moment he's no longer your fulfillment, something else will be. It doesn't mean that you don't love other things, other people, but there's an area of fulfillment. I love my wife, but she's not my fulfillment. He's my fulfillment. I love everybody. And I would never want to be my wife's fulfillment. I want him to be her fulfillment. See, this is where the area of the enemy begins to attach us to all of these emotional things. That's where we got to break off emotional attachments from people, places, and things. People are still walking in fear because of things that happened in their life. Accidents. Now, if they get in an accident, then they become afraid to drive. Why? Because it's an emotional attachment of fear to that position and that circumstance, that accident, that event that occurred to them in their life. Things that were spoken over our life as children affecting us today. Why? Because we've accepted them. Many people, especially uh, people that have been raped or molested or, or beaten and left for dead and so certain circumstances, rejection. You know, the enemy is trying to bring something to us to implant it in the mind so he has access to us. He likes to control people like a puppet if, if we let him. Amen? Would you turn to First Timothy chapter 4? It's a thought process in everything that we do, no matter what. First Timothy chapter 4. Now, you've got to realize that the Word of God is, the Bible's God's thoughts. Amen? Well, even though he used man, it's God thinking in man's thoughts. Amen? So in this, you and I live a process the processing of thoughts is an area and ability to exchange yours. If you're not willing to exchange it, you'll be bound. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1, would you speak it with me? Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Amen. Some will depart from the faith. Some will depart from the faith. Now you've got to understand what's faith is. We, we call it for, forever attached into the heavenlies. Amen. Why? Because faith is the area where you are connected to God. That's like an umbilical cord. And he says, many will depart from the faith. They will get disconnected. Doesn't the enemy want to disconnect you all the time? So that you no longer walk in faith, but you walk in what you see, what you feel, instead of things that are true, the things that are deceptive. So he says, many are going to depart from the faith, giving heed, listening to, deceiving spirits and agreeing with them. These de deceiving spirits are known as doctrines of demons. Or what's a demon? It's a disembodied spirit. It used to have one. God removed it. So now he wants a body. And he's looking for you to live in. He's looking for anybody so he can use them. And then they get fed by emotion. So he says something powerful. Look, at many are going to break covenant. Many are going to fall away. They're going to still proclaim themselves as Christians, but they're not going to walk according to Christ-like. And he says, and it goes a little further, he says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, they are no longer aware. They're not aware. Think about what's going on. I mean, when, when you see, especially politically right now, because that's what it's about. It's about seats and positions of authority that are controlling this world. Amen. We're battling over these things. Finally, the body of Christ is standing up and kicking butt. And God placed a man that he can use to do the things that are pleasing to him. So we're seeing a political battle. We're seeing a governmental battle. And it's actually the government of the kingdom of Christ against the government of the kingdom of Satan's kingdom. That's what's actually happening. It's not uh, Democrat or Republican or whatever because there's, you know, there's, there's corrupt in all of it regardless of what. But one is promoting more wickedness than another. 
And you may talk to people and say, man, how? They call themselves Christians, but does God approve abortion? No. Does he pr approve same-sex marriage and perversion? No. Does he promove, uh, approve of uh, corruption and, and deceit? No. So how can, we, how can people call themselves a Christian if they're voting for people that promote it? Amen? So we know that there's something. Why aren't they not aware of these things? Because their conscience has been seared. And it's been seared by the enemy. And the veil was put back on. It's called the veil of Satan or the blinding veil. They cannot receive. And when you try to correct them, boy, did they get angry. Because Satan's response is always anger, violence. And they lie and accuse. I mean, we see it all over the place. Uh, it's unfor I mean, the, the, what we're seeing is the Democratic Party really expressing these things because they're more out in front. But you still have the Liberal Party. You still have multiple parties that are still promoting the same things, but they're not as front and ex exposed as many. There's only one party, and that's called Jesus Party. That's the only culture that's worth anything is the Jesus culture. Amen. <laughs> But in that, God is placing his people, his servants in position now. But it's not going to maintain unless it's done by prayer. The battle is spiritual. It's not physical. So that's why we try to arm as many people possible with the penetrating prayer booklet. That's why we need to arm people. So, why? So that they can begin to battle. Remember, he says, my people are destroyed. Can you imagine Watching your own children being destroyed because they don't know the truth or reject the truth. Amen. You know, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And sometimes we've allowed it until we finally got the truth. We had to go through enough stuff to realize, you know what, something's not right here. I mean, I hit, I hit enough walls and get dragged through bushes and thorn bushes and run over a few times. They had tire tracks on me. You know? <laughs> I, I mean, I had to go through enough things to realize, hey, this ain't working. <laughs> but someone was waiting for me the whole time, the one had, who created us. He's always waiting for us. And he says, come to me and learn from me. Wasn't that what Jesus said? Come and learn. Why? If you don't learn, you're going to get burned again. You know, many times we've gone through the same thing and done the same thing over and over. Like, gosh, didn't I learn that yet? That's why it's so important about fellowshipping and learning and being filled with the Spirit of God. Because without the presence and the power of God Almighty, you and I can't do anything. That's why it's so important. Well, we're no longer relying on us. We're not trusting in us. We're not trusting in man. We're trusting in him. Amen? So, so look at what happens here. It's pretty wild because in this he says, they're speaking, verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hider. In other words, they're no longer aware. They, they used to be aware, now they're blinded. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. They've been deceived. Again, they've, been, they've departed from the attachment of the heavenlies, cause a disconnect. They're disconnected from what we call the anointing, which is the eternal presence, truth, and power of God Almighty in Christ. They no longer have a desire for God's presence. Let me tell you, when you lose the desire of God's presence, that's a warning. That's where you become lukewarm. Becoming lukewarm, Jesus said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Amen? One of the things that happens is, so we know that his presence is where we have fellowship. <laughs> Follow him in his presence. We fellowship with him. It says his presence and his truth. Freedom. Freedom comes by his truth. Amen? And power to what? Overcome. Power to break every yoke. Power. One of the things the enemy is always trying to do is cause what I call nullification. I don't even know if it's a word. But I can say anything under the anointing. <laughs> Numbification. It means they're getting dumbed down. Numb, dumb, you know, they're becoming numb to the presence of God. Amen? Numbification. Praise God. We might, it could be real simple. Dummy. You know, we're becoming dumb. And that's what the enemy loves to do. He likes to dumb down everything. 
so that there's a lack of awareness. So what they, when, when there's a lack of awareness, people begin to agree with things they shouldn't. Amen? And then what happens is because the process of thought, not, not committi committing to the area of maintaining that process of exchanging thoughts. Wait a minute, this one's not God. God wouldn't tell me that. God wouldn't tell me I'm not worthy. God wouldn't tell me he doesn't love me. God wouldn't. See, what happens is when a person's not exchanging these thoughts, they react and don't respond. And that's where the enemy tries to get us to a place to get you, push a button, trigger you, so that you react and not respond. Because when you react, he can plant a corruptible seed. You know, he's not stupid. He's been around a while. In fact, God gave him, gave him a lot of wisdom. Unfortunately, he uses it for the wrong thing. Amen. So in this, there's a lack of awareness so people begin to agree with the things they shouldn't. These are words of thought. Words of thought, words, thoughts. Every thought has a voice. Every thought has a voice. Every voice has a presence. Every presence has a desire. That's an emotion. It's trying to influence. And with these, it will either be of God or not of God. It's going to be of promoting righteousness or promoting evil. Amen? So there's an area where an individual, then it says here, let's go a little further, he says, Verse 4, for every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by the word of God. It's sanctified by what? So what does the word of God do? It causes you to separate yourself. But again, people are not taking the word of God literally. They just think it's another book. They don't realize it. They don't, so they don't know the contract with God. They don't know his promises. They don't know what's what. And, you know, these are bullets. Every word is a bullet. And you got to put it in your Holy Ghost bazooka so you can load it, man. You know, we should be walking around like kicking butt, overcoming those areas of temptation. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Let's speak it. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. How many of y'all know that the day you give up your last breath, you are in front of judgment? Man, if people would think that through, <laughs> think about that. If they, you know, do you realize you're going to be judged as soon as you give up your last breath? You are in front of God, and He's going to say, Come on in, or see ya. Verse 2 He said, Preach the word, release the word. Why? Be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke. Exhort, throw down with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will what? They will not endure sound doctrine. Whoa, they're going to create their own stuff that's pleasing emotionally. But according to their own desires, their own emotions or feelings, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers that will agree with them. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to what? Fables. Huh. But he said, you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your ministry. Remember, judgment awaits you and all mankind. The moment you release your last breath, you either go up or down. There is no in-between. And that's the doctrine of demon called purgatory. No such place. That's doctrines of demons. One saved, always saved is a doctrine of demon. Because who you serve when you die is where you go. 
But the enemy doesn't want people to know that. So we're to be releasing the words of life. And it's a course you and I must always maintain. Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Amen? So your words are going before you. They're either coming against you or working for you. No words fall to the ground. The angels either pick up the ones that are from God and work on your behalf, or the demons pick them up and work against you. Releasing the words of life, that is a course that you and I must maintain. Again, we, our, our purpose is to arm humanity with the truth. The enemy is always trying to alter our awareness of the unseen influence, trying to compromise it. He's constantly trying to replace godly thoughts with ungodly thoughts. We're trying to battle and fight for the godly thoughts and get rid of the ungodly thoughts. Amen? These, the, the, there's an area where people don't realize that in this continuing replacement, God's, the enemy tries to steal God's promises and covenant. And what does he want a replacement? Emotional desires. Amen? And what do these desires end up doing? They end up bringing destruction. They did bring a disconnect. People begin compromising, unfaithful, fall away. In Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. You know, we're not only maintaining our own monitoring. As you maintain your, in the process of maintaining your thoughts and to continue the process of exchange, and you're walking in the Spirit, you will also sense other people's thoughts. Amen? You'll sense other people's thoughts. It doesn't mean we're going around reading minds. Amen? But you'll sense what's being released where they are. Yeah, how, yeah, how many of y'all know you can sense fear in a person? Amen. Anxiousness. That's why the Lord says, be anxious for nothing. But all things between with what? Prayer and supplication. Why? Connect, connect, connect. That's why he calls something called presumptuous sin. Because people assume instead of wait on an answer. Isaiah 55, verse 1. Is everybody there? Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the what? Waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. But he says, you have no money. How are you going to buy it? <laughs> There's a price called worship. There's a price called speaking the word. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. That's what Jesus said, feed on my faithfulness. In other words, he said, if he says feed on my faithfulness, he's saying feed on my promises as on my word. And let your soul delight. And listen carefully to me and eat what is good. Let your soul delight itself in abundance. Your soul. Not your stomach. Amen. Your soul. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call on a nation you do not know. And nations who do not know you shall run to you because the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord what? While he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And the unrighteous man his what? Thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. The Lord says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For the rain comes down and snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and bring forth bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Eater, So shall my word. Now God is saying, listen, I'm giving you my thoughts into a word. And I'm going to send them to you. Here's my thoughts that are in a word. Here they come. That's why Jesus was the thought of God, the mind of God that came. That's why he's called the living word. He is carrying the thoughts of God Almighty and releasing them into this atmosphere. And anyone that's willing to receive his words, his thoughts, will change. Oh, hallelujah. I sh so, shall I, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I send it. Hmm. Now, is that powerful or what? So when you speak it, it's coming back to you, because what you sow is what you reap. So we've got to maintain this area of this thought process. Constantly exchanging, constantly exchanging. People give up too easy. Listen, this is a fight. It is a fight of life and death. Because the enemy comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Hebrews chapter 12. Of making exchanges, don't we? Well, didn't Jesus make the great exchange? So we carry on that process of exchange. Hebrew. Did Hebrew for you? <laughs> Hebrew for yourself. <laughs> Glory. God, is it hot in here or is it you? Please. Cook it. Hebrews chapter 12. Is everybody there? Good. We're going to start at verse 11. That's wonderful. Thank you. <sighs> Hebrews 12, 11. Is everybody there? We good? Let's sing it. <laughs> Let's speak it. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present. Amen? <laughs> Anybody ever been chastened by God? You all have been. You just didn't realize it. You thought you were going through an emotional attack. <laughs> but seems to be joyful for the present, but painful now, no chasing, he seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Been what? Trained by it. Everyone's in training, no matter what. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may be and not be dislocated, but rather be what? healed pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the lord looking carefully at carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble and by this become what defiled i mean all bitterness will cause the unforgiveness is defiling lest there be in any fornicator or profane person like esau who for a morsel of food sold his birthright. People are selling their birthright like crazy because they don't know. For you know that afterwards he wanted to inherit the blessing, but he was rejected for he found no place of true repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. He cried about it, but he really didn't. There was no heart change. What was he sorry about? He lost the blessing. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Words of life. Jesus gave me and you the words of life. Amen. 
So in this, you and I, God's going to bring us through a process. And when we refuse to go through the process of this exchanging, we fall into what we call trouble. It's chastening. Why? God is going to get your attention. Amen? Because he knows if we were in that state of being, we would not make it home all the way. Amen? You know, one of the things God wants us to do is have a full reward, not a partial. Too many people settle for a partial reward. Jesus paid the full price so that we could have a full reward. And the word of God is living, isn't it? It's powerful, isn't it? And it pierces every area of mind, of soul, of emotion, of bone, marrow. Why? Because it brings healing. And every intent or intention, it exposes the heart of an individual. So you think maybe we need to examine ourselves. Once a month? Once a week? How about every day? Every morning. That's what, see, because every morning you make the exchange, you're disconnecting from the world, connecting to God, and his mercies are being released. Proverbs 23. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody there? Verse 6, do not eat the bread of a miser. I call him a compromiser. <laughs> Nor desire his delicacies. As he thinks in his heart, so he is. As he thinks in his heart, as you think in your heart, so you are. So if there's not a constant exchanging of what is not pleasing to God of thoughts, you become. Again, there's that battle. The enemy uses music, media, TV, books, education, doctors, pharmacies. He uses everything, peers. Even our own parents didn't know the truth. They might have thought they were doing something good, but they didn't know the truth, and they passed down that same dumb deception. But thank God, he's the God of first fruits who choose, choose somebody out of that family and become a first fruit. Amen? So in this, he says, look at <laughs> Do not eat the bread of a miser, for as he thinks in his heart, so he will be. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not what? With you. The morsel you've eaten, you'll vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Don't waste your pleasant words. <laughs> the word says, don't throw your pearl before swine. Be careful. Amen? We carry the words of life. As you think in your thoughts of influence. How many of all memory is influence? Memory has a voice. Emotions have a voice. Desire has a voice. Flesh has a voice. Demons have a voice. How many of y'all know labels have a voice? Labels. So we got to constantly disconnect all the time and then reconnect. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10. It is a process that you and I cannot stop doing. You cannot compromise this process. The process of exchange process of exchanging your thoughts. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. Because what you speak is what you eat, and what you eat is what you become. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. Is everybody there? For though we walk in the physical realm, what we call the flesh, we do not war according to the physical realm. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical, but they're mighty in God for pulling down what? Strongholds. Now, what is a stronghold? 
It is a memory lie. So no matter what, the moment you came out of the womb, you've been told something. You've been creating and storing memory from the moment you came into this realm. And that memory and all those memories have a voice. They have a voice of influence, good or bad. Amen? And so in this process that you and I go through and live now, we've got to begin to weed out these things. From the moment, even when we were in our mother's womb, things were spoken over. You were in your mother's womb when mom and dad were having an argument and you heard things that were a part of you and you didn't even realize it. Then there might have been an argument over you while you were in the womb. I knew I shouldn't have had this kid. Nice. Whatever it might have been spoken over. It's called a stronghold. That means the enemy's got an access to you through that memory. You know, you can go in the stores and whatever, and that music will come on, and all of a sudden that one setup, that song just brings you back to somewhere. Amen? Why? Because it's an emotional attachment. It is a memory. That's where you and I break and cut these loose. So that it, when, it, when you do hear it, it doesn't bring you back. It doesn't have an effect on you. But it must come out of your tongue. It must come out of the power of your mouth. Because your tongue has the power of life and death. Amen? So our weapons are not physical. But they're mighty in God for pulling down these memory lies. Cutting loose from them. Look at verse 5. Casting down what? Arguments. Where's the argument? In your foot? Arguments. Where? In your mind, in your thoughts, in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought, bringing every thought, bringing every thought. That is the process. Bringing every thought, bringing every thought into the captivity, to the obedience of Christ. In other words, you bring it and compare it to what God says. When you do that, and you realize that that thought that you're holding on to isn't right, and you want the thought of, now you got the ability and the authority to exchange it. Amen? Because it says in verse 6, being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Wow. Now, these strongholds memorialize of agreement. They are altering the thoughts and lives of individuals. They bring destruction and false identity. And false what? Identity. Why? Because their perception is now flawed. They can't perceive things that they should. They're not aware of certain things. There's a lack of awareness of the care of God and the love of God. And then there's a lack of perception of their true identity and reality. Remember, one of the first things the enemy wants to do is come and steal who you are. If he can steal your identity. I mean, now think about it. As I was growing up, every sports player was my hero. You know. People were, I mean, we had heroes in our life. People that we wanted to be like. Because we were never really brought to the area where Jesus can be your hero. You know, we were always, it's just some religious thing. You know, I always thought that people went to church because they got old. I didn't know that. Oh, man, they're going to church because they know they're getting old. <laughs> That's how my thought pattern was. And then when I went to church, it was, you know, I, didn't, I couldn't receive anything because I saw the same old thing. Do a few push-ups, run around the church, put a few bucks in, and you're forgiven. It's not how it works. Then we'll, and then, here, pray to the dead so you can get Chris Moore. But I was brought up in deception. Didn't know. Didn't know about exchange. Didn't know about the power of the Holy Spirit. Didn't know about the baptism and the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Where I could truly be connected. And get a language that pleases God instead of my old one. Hallelujah. <laughs> in Romans 8.
glory. Romans 8, verse 1. Is everybody there? We're no longer roaming. We're steadfast, aren't we? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Well, hello. If you're walking according to the Spirit, are you walking according to the Word of God? Yes. So if you're not reading the Word of God, eating the Word of God, how are you going to know what the Word of God is? Remember, God's words are His thoughts. He's trying to exchange those with us all the time. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that in it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and account of sin, he condemned it in the flesh. So that there is a righteous requirement. Everyone say, righteous requirement. So that means there is a requirement, a level that you and I must meet. And what is that righteous requirement? Of the law that might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So that requirement is fulfilled when you are walking according to the spirit. But if you're walking according to what the world says, and you're taking what the world says, and super allowing it to supersede what God says, you are in the flesh. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the flesh or the things of the world. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To be naturally carnally minded is death. Now think about that. To, in other words, to be carnally thought. Uh, in other words, if your thoughts are not according to God's thoughts. If you're not exchanging. Amen. Now don't get me wrong. You got to go to work. You do things. But you know what? God still can be in it. You labor on to the Lord. You invite him in everything you're doing. Lord, I need your direction in here. You know. Can you show me what to do? I exchanged my talent for your talent now. I thank you for this talent that you've given me, but Lord, I'm turning it over to you. Why? So you could be used for your glory. My abilities, everything. Lord, I turned it all over to you. I turned you my bank account, my homes, my everything. Everything that I own is yours. Do whatever you want with it. That's why many couldn't get into heaven. They couldn't follow God because they still wouldn't let go of those things. They think they own everything. You and I don't own nothing. Everything is lent to me and you. But I earned it. You didn't earn anything because he gave you the ability to earn it. The only thing we're trying to earn is his trust. Amen? Oh, happy days. <laughs> Verse 5, so those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit, to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life. And because the carnal mind is empty of God to God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So you need a new mind. Amen. That's the bottom line. Your physical mind will never please God. You need to have the mind of Christ and replace those thoughts. So then those who are in the flesh will not please God. In other words, those who are constantly living for their selfish ambitions are not pleasing God. Why? Because they're always putting themselves first. They think and walk according to worldly standards of approval and rejecting the words of life. They will not proceed much longer. And John 15. The process. Hallelujah. John 15. In verse 1, John 15, verse 1, let's speak it. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch, who are the branches? We're the branch. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the what? The word, which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. 
as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So in other words, we will not produce the fruits that are pleasing to God unless there is a connection abiding. That means abiding in his presence and abiding in his word. Exchanging, making that process of exchange. Your presence for his presence, your thoughts for his thoughts. Your ways for his ways. Your past for his future. Now this positions us into a place where we're living from the future to the present, no longer from the present, or from the past to the present. Verse 5. And that is a sure sign how you examine yourself. Am I living from the past to the present? Then I know I'm not in divine order. But if I'm living from the future to the present, it means I'm living according to what God says I am, not according to the world says I am. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Uh, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him he bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. That's called hell. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So why don't people get what they ask? Because the words are not abiding in them. Amen? In other words, there hasn't been an exchange because faith comes by hearing the word of God, doesn't it? So, but the enemy is always trying to steal that word. The word is known as a seed also. But these are the thoughts of God. We've got to get beyond just words. These are the thoughts of God that he's replacing your thoughts with his thoughts. How many of y'all know that if he can trust someone who's got more of his thoughts? Is, you know what I'm saying? You can trust someone who's more like-minded with you. Amen. One of the things about in this walk with the Lord, we become more detail of things. We become more aware. That's more detail. In construction, there's a crew that frames and does the drywall insulation and all the other stuff. Then there's a crew at the end that comes in to complete the detail. Fixes this, fixes that. They complete the detail so that the house, the building is set for inspection and can pass. So you and I need to be more detailed, more aware, so that when we are challenged, tested, we pass God's test. Amen? But if you react, you fail. You'll, it will come around again until you finally stop. Because there's an area of exchange. Why does a person react or get offended? Because there's an open door. Amen. There's an open door somewhere. There's still something open there. Trying to protect self. Why do people argue? Trying to protect self. Why do people justify? Why do people blame? Protect self. Amen. Self-promotion, self-whatever, it's always about self. Why? Because there's an open door there. There's an exchange. There's a, there's a stronghold that hasn't been destroyed yet or removed yet. Because it's a memory lie, isn't it? Is everybody okay? So we're to abide in his presence and we're exchanging our old ways of thoughts and, for the te and temporary for the eternal ways and thoughts that are pleasing to God. And Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. You know, you can pray that prayer, Lord, I exchanged my thoughts for your thoughts, but you got to still have the word. Because <laughs> that's where the true exchange comes. He's saying, okay, take my word and replace it here. Take this word and replace it there. Take what I said here and replace it here. Amen. Jeremiah 17. Glory. In verse 5. Jeremiah 17 and verse 5. Is everybody there? Thus says the Lord, cursed. What's the opposite of cursed? What's the opposite of blessed? Okay, we're on the right track now. <laughs> Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in 
man and makes flesh his what? Strength. Whose heart departs from the Lord. Well, why did it depart from the Lord? Because they began to trust the man. Well, why did they trust the man? Because they never made a thought exchange. They're still living according to the world's thoughts and approvals. Hmm. Whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert. That isn't very pretty. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. A salt land. That means on the shore of the Dead Sea. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Listen, trusting in the Lord means you're standing on his word, what he says. I'm standing, Lord, no matter what's going on. I'm not going to allow my feelings, my thoughts, or the world to dictate what you said. I'm standing on what you said. Hey, what's the worst thing that can happen? You can die and go home. But you know what? When you stand before God, you know, you said, I stood on your word. You know what he's going to say? Enter in, my good and faithful servant. Why? Because you stood on the word. He just said, I wanted you home with me. Amen? Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and, and whose hope is in the Lord. What is the result? He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaves will be green, and he will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. What does he say? Listen, your heart is deceitful above all things. Why? Because your heart is the core of all desires. Listen, as you begin to exchange your thoughts, your heart's going to change. Hearts don't change without an exchange of thought. You can become emotionally changed, but then that gets thrown away after a period of time. Because the thoughts, the, vo the words of God, the thoughts of God got to come in you. Then you get the heart of God. Amen? You can't have the heart of God by just an emotion. You have the heart of God by the thoughts of God. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. Hello, I search the what? When he says I search the heart, he's saying I search your desires. Amen? I test your thoughts. I test the mind. Even to give every man according to his way, according to the fruit of his doings. So he's going to reward you by making those exchanges all the time. In Romans, it tells us, do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, renewing the thoughts, getting rid of those old ones, putting new ones on. Is everybody Okay. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians 4, oh, happy days, Ephesians 4, in verse 17, Somebody there? This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind or of their what? Thoughts. Having their understanding what? Darkened. That's being, in other words, they're not aware. Being alienated from the life of God because of the what? Ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart, or their heart's blinded because their minds are blinded. Amen? Who being past feeling, they're still living by emotion. Having given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with what? Greediness. He says, here it is. Are you ready? He says, you've not learned Christ. You've not learned his thoughts. You've not learned his ways. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your thoughts, of your mind, that you put on the 
new man which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. True righteousness and holiness. First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. So whose responsibility does it take off and put on? Ours. That's if you truly believe. First Peter chapter 4. In verse 17. Oh, I'm sorry, verse 1. First Peter <laughs> chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves with the what? Same what? Same mind, which means what? Same thoughts. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the natural realm flesh for the loss of men, but live for the will of God. You can't live for the will of God if you don't have the mind of God. For we spent enough, uh, spent, uh, enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not walk with them in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. First hmm. Peter chapter 5. And verse 5. everybody there? Didn't have far to go, did you? We're going to close here. But before we close here, in the book of Genesis, Jesus said something very powerful. When Adam and Eve blew it because they heeded the voice of the serpent. And when the Lord entered the garden because because of their disobedience, they became blinded. The spiritual realm was now closed to them. They could no longer see the angels or the serpent or anything. They couldn't even see God anymore because God used to speak to them face to face. And the Lord walked in the garden, and, it, and the word says that Adam knew this presence of God was in the garden, but he couldn't see him. And the Lord said, Adam, where are you at? Like he didn't know where he was at. I mean, he is God, you know. And Adam said, I'm over here. I hid myself. Because I was afraid. See, Adam never knew what fear was. The first thing that happened to Adam and Eve is they got deceived. The second thing is, is they, when they get that deception brought fear to them. And the first thing they did is run from God instead of to him. And the Lord said, Adam... Who told you that? Who told you that you were afraid? Who told you that? Then there's a question mark on the back. Who told you that? Awesome, awesome message, conversation piece. Who told you that? Who told you to promote abortion? Who told you to lie? Who told you to approve of things that God disapproves of? Who told you that? We don't fight phys physical realm. We fight powers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places. Disembodied spirits that are carrying a voice. 
We are fighting these things. Who told you that? People begin to start monitoring their thoughts and begin to exchange. See, the more you exchange your thoughts for his thoughts, you don't have to monitor anymore. It's automatic. That ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. Amen? That ain't right. I'm not accepting that. Everybody's trying to place a label on you. Even the enemy comes to like to promote you to put pride on you. Oh, you did a really good job. Oh, thank you. Pride. Not willing to give God the glory. Oh, man, we are in crazy times right now. Wherever you turn, everything is bombarding and coming against us. But you know, we're overcoming. Because he who's in us is greater than he who's in the world. And we are more than conquerors. To those who are connected. You can't be a conqueror if you're not connected. And you can't be connected without the thoughts of God in you. Amen. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. Be clothed with what? Humility. For God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. What's God's grace? God's plan. It's not unmerited favor. It's God's plan. You earn God's favor. Verse 6. Therefore what? Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. In other words, he's got a plan for you. Just hang tough. Stand on the word. Continue to exchange your thoughts for his thoughts. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Be sober. Hello. That means alert. Aware. Be vigilant. That means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. That means big mouth. Seeking whom he can deceive or seeing who seed he can steal of God's thoughts. He's looking to see if he can take your God's thoughts for his. Anybody ever get discouraged? Well, what happened when you got discouraged? There was an exchange made. God doesn't discourage us. He encourages us. In other words, we agreed with a discouragement about oppression. Look at all these people that are antidepressants. And they think that these pills are going to help them. When the side effect is suicide. I mean, think about it. Let's just take more antidepressants and die. Well, they don't have to worry about their thoughts then. They just got to worry about where they're going to wake up. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a big mouth looking for him to deceive and steal and exchange your thoughts. It says, resist him steadfast in the faith. In the faith. It's connected. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, so you're not the only one going through it. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, after you've been tested a while, if you've been chastened a while, after you've gone through this stuff till you finally get it and said, you know what, I'm going to exchange these thoughts. I'm not going to agree with these things no more. In other words, something happened. You awoken. Amen? Let's snap. Snap. Praise God. May the God of all grace, after you suffered for a while, then you're going to be perfected because you're going to learn from it. Then you're going to be established where you can't be moved. Then you're going to be strengthened. Amen? And then you're going to be settled where it's over. Done. I'm maintaining this course. I'm maintaining the exchange. I'm maintaining the process of exchanging thoughts. I'm, ex I'm maintaining my connection. Nothing else is my fulfillment but Him. His presence and His Word. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We are honored and blessed. And let everybody be awakened and aware of who told them that. That we may walk in victory, bringing glory to Your name as carriers of the living Word, as the anointing, an extension of your love, power, and truth.
that you may receive all the glory and honor and praise in everything that you do. In Jesus' name.